going to do a quick class on a pressure regulator. So the pump in a hydraulic system is uh, obviously usually pulls fluid from the sump through some type of filter and it goes to the pump. The pump has a gear that spins obviously in this area on this pump. This is the suction side. This goes to the case and down to the filter on the Turbo 400. The gear goes around the crescent, brings it around to this side, compresses the fluid and puts it into these circuits here. So, depending on how many RPM you are spinning the pump, you could have an extreme amount of pressure. Like this pump will easily make 600 pounds of pressure. But the aluminum case and some of the lugs inside and quite a few of the parts are really not designed to handle much more than about 300. So some, some, in some cases, the intermediate lugs will only handle about 230, 240 in a stock case, typically. So just to give a class, you make the pressure with the pump. pump pump will make the pressure but then you have to control it somehow so you do that with a pressure regulator valve and a pressure regulator valve exists in pretty much every type of hydraulic system you know whether this be a, a PTO pump on a tractor or a truck or something or a, a you know hydraulic pump used on a forklift to activate the uh, the uh, the mast or whatever else you know any, anything that uses hydraulics to, to move things or power things You've got to control the pressure. So you make the pressure and you have to control it. So how that happens on a typical Turbo 400 is, let me, let me get my uh, PR valve in about the right, right position here. When it, is, when it is in full pressure, it is not regulating, it would be in this position. If you look down there, you can see the one in the actual pump is it's there. So this end would be up against the little aluminum plug that the pin is down to that hole, typically. And pressure, after it's made, it's coming to the regulator valve to push the regulator valve against the spring. Okay, we're going to just say this spring is stopped here for now. And it, there's a slug in the bottom of the spring that holds it it's static. It's not a variable pressure, it's a static pressure design. PR valve again. So anytime this valve is in that position, your pressure is going to just run away. Like it, this is not operating position, this is when the vehicle is not running and the pump is not producing pressure position. It has to move to at least about there to begin to regulate. And what that does, is it takes pressure from the high pressure side and it allows it to bleed back over into this circuit which is the suction side to go back into the pump and recirculate so this land right here on that divider is that's making tons of pressure and it has to move this way to start to dump the fluid and it can continue to move quite a bit you know probably in normal operation under low throttle, it's probably going to be somewhere around there. So it's making pressure and it's dumping quite a bit of it back into the suction side. And then if the pressure drops, the valve will move this way and close off how much can bleed from the pressure side to the suction side. And keep in mind, I'm doing this one handed, so I don't have a good pointer. And this is what we call a dual stage regulator valve so our pressure here not, gets controlled by dumping back to the suction side but also while it's regulating and it's moving in this pump like this to regulate pressure it's opening the pressure to the converter circuit right here it's going from this line pressure side through this hole into the converter circuit to charge the converter and that happens at less than line pressure usually so you, you, you want it to be less than line pressure. So that's how that controls that. Your line pressure acts on the end of this valve and pushes it until it opens back up to relieve the pressure back to the suction side or back to the sump, depending on the design of the, you know, the whole entirety of the circuit. <clears throat> so the valve is going to be constantly shuttling a little bit, like you're seeing there. But if the valve were to close to here, and not move if it's stuck, say it's got some dirt or debris in it, 
and it sticks right here or all the way in its closed position, like right here, the pressure will go run away. Another thing you can see is the valve sticks, say, where it is relieving some pressure, but it can't open more to relieve more pressure when the volume comes up, like the RPM comes up. So say it gets stuck right there. You might have, say, your pressure may be low at idle speed, and then it may be excessive at, you know, high RPM. So you could have, say, 50 pounds at idle, and then when you rev the motor up, the, the pressure becomes more RPM dependent. And uh, that's how, that's one, I don't know, not sure fire, but pretty sure, um, you know, indicator that you have a PR valve that's hung, but not hung in a closed position. It's hung somewhere in the open position because it's relieving pressure, but it's not variable at all. It's, it's becomes, pressure becomes variable with RPM. So that's basically how the pressure regulator valve works. It has to open to relieve pressure back to the suction or, or sump of the hydraulic system. And that is, is basic. Is, the design doesn't change really too much on any uh, piece of hydraulic equipment. It has to have you know, your, your lifts, your two and four post lifts you use in the shop. The pump motor has a pressure regulator very similar to that in the, in the block on the motor. To regulate the pressure and it's adjusted to limit the amount of uh, weight that the lift can can lift off the ground you know that's why they rate them at nine or ten thousand because they turn the pump to a setting that matches the you know structural strength of the lift so you have a spring here you get different springs spring rates lengths and everything that affect that so let's assume this was a dummy plug that's just a spring seat and nothing acts on this this PR valve the spring would absolutely control the pressure so you would need uh, a pretty stiff spring if you don't have any assist if you don't have any hydraulic assist the spring is considerably stiffer than what you see here in the case of a of almost every automatic transmission out there any modern one anyway you have a hydraulic assist and so what occurs is you have a boost valve so this is your sleeve it goes in the pump it acts as a spring seat like that, it has the piston, goes in the sleeve. As you see, there's two diameter lands on there, the small diameter and the large diameter here. The small diameter that's more inboard in the sleeve, so it goes in like this, it's fed oil through this hole and through this, this area here that has a hole in it on the boost valve. It acts on this end of the valve and it pushes this against the PR valve. So these two are actually mated together when it's in operation. <clears throat> the large land is for reverse. And a lot of times you see instructions on some of the various valve bodies where they have you grind a, grind a flat on that. And that is to kill reverse boost. Now you don't want to usually just grind a flat on that because when you go into reverse, you now have a leak however big you have ground that. So typically you want to kill the oil to reverse boost but when you kill the oil to reverse boost, you're also usually killing any exhaust that may exist for that land. So that's why you ground the land is so that any oil that leaks by on your primary boost doesn't gather underneath this piston in the sleeve and continue to push and create a, a greater hydraulic force than what you're intending to. Because based on the diameter of this and your spring tension is how hard you're going to be pushing this to increase the line pressure. So... That's why a lot of times you grind a land for the reverse boost. But when this goes in the sleeve and it's in the pump and the spring is in place, it's basically, we'll, we'll omit the spring for, but we know it's there. The spring's acting on the PR valve. And the PR valve in the non-regulating position is right here. And you see there's not much space there. But we know that this thing has to go back to there to start regulating. And so they're butted together and the boost valve pushes this PR, the more pressure that goes in here, to push on the PR, the, the greater the overall line pressure becomes. And in the case of a Turbo 400, you have modulated line pressure that goes to this hole. And that's coming off the, the modulator valve after, it, and the modulator valve reduces it to, depending on the vacuum source, will reduce it from line pressure, from max line pressure down to whatever is kind of designed into the system. 
Um, you know, we know a Turbo 400 stock makes usually 160 to 170 pounds of line pressure. So this boost valve can see all 160 pounds of line pressure when the modulator is seeing zero vacuum. So the diameter of the boost valve has to be less than the PR valve. Otherwise, you would have runaway line pressure. In the case of a 480 and a lot of more modern transmissions, they have an AFL circuit. And the boost valve will be a lot of times a larger diameter and can actually be larger than even the, the PR valve or, or get near the size of the PR valve. So that's another thing to watch for as well. Um, it's another reason why an AFL circuit is important. But in the case of uh, most manual valve bodies, full manual valve bodies on a Turbo 400, they may not use this and they may have come with a really stiff spring or they may uh, still put oil to the the primary booster but it's usually just straight line pressure it's just a circuit in the valve body that just puts oil straight back to the boost valve and makes it fixed line pressure and that works fine it does give it some uh, you know there's some room for error there you have leaks and, and such that can cause the line pressure not be as anticipated but that's what we we look for so another thing I'll note, specifically on a Turbo 400 pump, what I, what I showed earlier is this is line pressure coming straight off the gears, and it goes to here, and it goes down that hole to act on the pressure regulator valve and force it towards the spring, into the spring and boost valve. On early Turbo 400 pumps, you'll see the pump is shaped differently. There is no circuit coming up to the top of the boost valve. That can be milled into the pump, but... The way they did that originally is the PR valve has a small hole in the top end and it comes out here. So when it's in the pump and it's in position, it sees the pressure. This circuit actually goes, it's, it's got cast up into, so this is tied to this. Underneath the, the wall there, you kind of can probably see it. So when this valve, is in its position right here the uh, the line pressure goes through this hole up through the valve to the end to act on the valve and regulate instead of the circuit being made into the pump and there were there were reasons for that that was uh there was a circuit on the other half of the pump that needed to cross over this area for the converter especially on uh, switch pitch models but all of the early 400s were done that way and you can see this valve is what we call a solid regulator valve. It, it, it has no hole, obviously, hence what we call a solid, versus that. So you got to make sure you don't mix up those pressure regulator valves with the wrong pump. You could put this valve in that pump, even though it's unnecessary and you wouldn't have any negative effect. But if you put this valve in that pump and there's no oil, to go on top of this valve and push it, what actually happens is runway pressure because there's nothing to, to move that valve to move the oil from pressure side to, to relieve it to the suction side. So it'll just, it'll just make pressure until it breaks something. So that should be hopefully a, a pretty simple but clear class on uh, the very basics of a pressure regulator valve and the boost valve and how it operates in an automatic transmission.